In this demonstration using Lucis version 16, we'd like to take you through creating a simple bridge deck model, viewing some results, generating a report, making corrections to the model, using the traffic load optimizer and checking the reinforcement, all in less than 15 minutes. So, here's the deck concerned. It's 10 meters wide and 500 millimeters thick with main reinforcement of 20 millimeter bars at 150 centers. The carriageway is a total of 7.4 meters between curb lines. There are three spans of 15 meters, 20 meters and 15 meters. And because these are continuous over simple supports, we're going to analyze the deck alone rather than the whole structure. Of course, in Lucis, you have the flexibility to model the whole structure when you feel that's the best option. And on plan, the deck has a skew of about 35 degrees. I'm going to start a new model in Lucis, giving it a name, Skew Slab Deck. I'm using units of kilonewtons and meters. And in this drop list, I'm choosing to create a 2D grillage or plate model rather than a 3D model. I can change my mind downstream, of course, but this option streamlines the choices I make and avoids me getting muddled about which options are valid. I'm not using a startup template, although using one would make this demonstration even shorter. Now, I'm going to create a layout grid to help me draw the structure. That's completely optional, but it does allow me to create the geometry for this model very rapidly. The three surfaces representing the three spans of the bridge, 15, 20 and 15 meters apiece. Of course, the bridge has a skew on plan, and so I'm going to simply move these three lines seven meters in the X direction. And the shape of the structure is now fully mapped out. So I can move on to the attributes. First on the list is the mesh, where I define an element type. In essence, this selects a numerical idealization for the slab. There are only two options to choose between for the surfaces in this model, both of which are plate elements. I'll use thick plates, which include shear deformations and give all the bending and shear results I'd need for a full design. I accept all the defaults here and I assign that attribute to the relevant parts of my model. In this case, all three surfaces by dragging and dropping it from the tree view on the left to the graphics window on the right. Elements are created with the default four divisions on each edge. In fact, I can change the number of divisions on any line in my model at any time in the modeling process. And a neat way to do that is to use a line mesh attribute. In this dialog, I can see that the line element types compatible with plates are grillage elements and joint elements only. In fact, I don't want either. I just want to specify some divisions, say two meter divisions. And in this case, I'm going to assign that attribute to all the lines in my model giving me a nice even grid mesh of plate elements. Working down the attributes menu, I can define a surface thickness of 500 millimeters, a concrete material to EN 1992 part two, the bridge part, grade 50 say, and assign each of these to the relevant surfaces in my model. In this particular case, all three surfaces. I move on to define my supports and again I only see the options relevant to this 2D plate model. As the slab is simply supported I mark the z-direction translation as being fixed and I assign that support attribute to the appropriate lines in my model. As I add loading I reach this line in the attributes menu, which indicates that I'm generating the last thing which is strictly necessary for a linear static analysis. And I'll add a distributed load representing surfacing, which is 75 millimeters thick and 26 kilonewtons per meter cubed, which I can assign again to all the surfaces in this model. Rotating the model a little, I can see the loading and support arrows. Switching to the analysis tab of the tree view, I'm renaming load case one as self weight and adding gravity to it. And with that, I'll press the solve now button so I can start to look at deformations and other results from the active load case. I'll add a contour of moment, MX. And looking on plan, I might save that view. 
I might like to see the bending moments from end to end as a diagram, which we can do by cutting a graph through 2D. The graph can be for selected load cases or for all, and can be for any results component, not just the one being displayed in the contour. And I can optionally have the graph results averaged across a width, a corridor width of, say, one meter. I can have as many graphs as I like, and I can also display any result along that cut line right there on the model using a diagrams layer. We can view with perspective. And switch between saved views by dragging and dropping. Likewise, we can switch between load cases by dragging and dropping. Using the print results wizard, I can view tables of results, such as reactions, which I can save to Excel. This includes some very useful summary tabs. Now let's create a report, bringing together the many useful things we've already saved. I'm including a plot on the front cover and minimizing white space by switching off this page breaks option. And when we add a chapter to the report, we can include model data such as point coordinates and material properties, as well as tables of results like the reactions we looked at previously and any others we would like to add using the new button. We can include any or all saved views for any or all load cases along with our graphs. Lastly, we can add notes which will be saved in the utilities tree and therefore will always remain attached to the model even if the project is archived and reopened years from now. As well as, of course, being included in the report. When we view the report, all the graphical plots from the various load cases, the graphs, the tables of input and output data, notes and so on are generated fresh and by default a PDF file is created a snapshot of the model, which could be sent to a checking team or a client. You may have noticed that I made a big mistake as I constructed this model. I put in a skew of 35 degrees, but in the wrong direction. But here's the good news. I can alter the geometry of the model, or anything else about the model. And now I can view the revised report. All the results from the old model were unusable because of my mistake, and so all the graphs, plots, tables, and even the coordinates must be generated fresh, but the report writer makes it a lot quicker than it would have been done manually. Meantime, someone might be working on another part of the project, and I can merge in their effort. As a simple example, I can merge in a carriageway definition using the model merge. And this reminds me, I need to be adding traffic loading to this model. I define an influence attribute for the result of interest. Let's stick with moments MX in the global direction. And assign it to consider mid span, span one, the west pier, and span two to start with. And I create a vehicle load optimization analysis. Lucis supports a wide range of international codes with a number added in version 16, including the Danish implementation of the Eurocode and the Swedish military vehicles. For this example, I'm going to use the UK National Annex. In the optional code settings, I'm going to choose the characteristic case and the SV100 special vehicle. I define the curbs using the selected lines Add the negative influences for sagging and positive for hogging. And perhaps choose to see all the load patterns. When the optimizer is run, I can drag and drop load cases to see the locations of the SV vehicles. The tandem system in red and the LM1 UDL there in purple. We can see that the lane arrangement is calculated automatically, including the remaining area being moved such that the most onerous traffic arrangement according to the selected code is identified. Pressing solve 
makes all the results from the traffic load cases available. For a real project, we would need other additional loads, but let's look at how we could combine and factor whatever loads we have in our model to suit the codes of practice. We can use basic or smart combinations found here on the analysis menu, or we can use the design combinations facility where we can choose a code of practice and identify each of the existing load cases or combinations as corresponding to a particular type in that code. We might request some ULS and SLS combinations. And we can use advanced options to, for example, make the traffic load patterns mutually exclusive, which would be appropriate for this instance. I'm using the basic combination option here, which means that when I press finish, I get to see every combination and factor which Lucis is going to check. If I drag and drop a particular combination, I see the results with those specific factors in place. Finally then, I might like to specify some reinforcement for the side spans, and the main span. I use the design menu to set design parameters using one of the many available codes once again. And if this were a 3D model, I would have the additional option for calculations to incorporate overall compression or tension for both the ULS and the cracking checks. Then I simply use the contours layer or any of the usual output options to view the utilization. And here I can see that the side span is overutilized with nearly 230% utilization, whereas the main span has a utilization just under 101% in this green area using 25 millimeter bars. That's just for the final load combination in my list. So I'd want to use an envelope maximizing the utilization at each node in the model using all the available load combinations. And this indicates that I'm going to need more reinforcement in the bottom face of this slab. And of course, I can check the top face reinforcement as well, or I can choose to view contours of the required bar diameter or the area of steel in the X or the Y directions. Of course, I can save this contour plot and add it to my report. So any changes to my model, and I still have all the results regenerated in moments. A simple workflow with excellent repeatability and the flexibility to use the same software for any structure, not just bridge decks, and certainly not restricted to reinforced concrete. Lucis version 16.